what religion was Jesus? Now, we have to understand that uh, Jesus was born into a Jewish family who followed the Jewish law and traditions, okay? That is uh, Mary and Joseph. That is, uh, as is written in Luke uh, 2, 27. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents bought, brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, and so forth. So, you see? Now, something you have to understand is that Jesus' lineage is from the tribe of Judah. And the uh, tribe of Judah is one of the, the 12 tribes of Israel. He was born in the Jewish town of Bethlehem and raised in Nazareth. So Jesus was fully immersed in Jewish culture, nationality, and religion. We also have to understand that also, apart from that, Jesus practiced the religion of the first century Judaism. He was born under the law. The Bible says he was born under the law. Galatians 4, 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Jesus was born under the law. Okay? And he grew up learning the Torah and following his precepts. He perfectly obeyed the Mosaic law and all the commandments and ordinances and feasts. This one is proven in the book of uh, Hebrews uh, 4.14. 4.14. Hebrews 4.14. Hebrews 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So this means that Jesus perfectly obeyed all the Mosaic law. That's why he was tempted because Mosaic law says do not do this, do not sin, do not do that, do not do that. So he was obeying that and yet he did not sin. Okay. He not only obeyed the law, he fulfilled it and brought his requirements to a close. Okay? So Jesus obeyed the law and he brought all his requirements to a close. Matthew 5, 7, 5, 17. Matthew 5.17 It says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Hmm. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one title shall not in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So he came to fulfill the law. Okay? And the Bible tells us in Romans 10 verses 4. Okay? It says, for Christ is the end of the law. So he fulfilled the law and he became the end of it for righteousness to everyone that believes. So Jesus did not come to destroy the law, but he fulfilled it. You may ask, how did Jesus fulfill the law? How did Jesus fulfill the law? He lived a sinless life. He did everything as the law required. So... If you believe in him, you take his righteousness. You take his fulfillment of the law. Okay? Now, something else you have to understand is that Jesus and his disciples observed the Passover. As the Bible says in John 2.13. John. John 2.13. He, he observed this uh, Jewish uh, feast, the feast of Passover. 
And as the Jews, Passover was at hand and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. So he was participating in the same, you're seeing. Okay. And also verse 23 explains much. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, okay, in the feast day, many believed in his name and when they saw the miracles which he did. So, meaning Jesus participated in the traditions of the Jewish Judaism religion, okay? Judaism religion, that, that should be. And of course, we can see in Luke 22 from verse 7 to 8, it also speaks about uh, uh, him also participating in these feasts, okay? Luke, Luke 22, verse 7 to 8, it says, Then came the day of the unleavened bread, when the Passover must be killed. You see, he participated in the unleavened bread, the day of the unleavened bread, the feast of the unleavened bread. He participated also. The feast of tabernacles, also he participated you know, the Feast of Tabernacles. That is John 7, 2 to 10. And, uh, and uh, there, there are so many. He, he kept all these feasts. So he kept an unnamed a Jewish feast also. There is another feast which uh, was not even named, but Jesus also kept it. So meaning is one of those feasts. John 5, uh, verses 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. You see, this is also another feast, so we don't know which one it is. So, meaning he was keeping, uh, he was keeping the law, the Judaism law, you know, the Judaism, everything which was uh, asked of them. He also, Jesus, he also attended, he also attended worship services and taught in synagogues. As written in Mark 1.21. Mark. Mark 1.21. It says that uh, he participated in the synagogues. And they went into Capernaum and straight away on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. So he was always in teaching in the synagogues. And also you can go and check um, Mark 3.1 and John 6.59. And John 18, 20, they talk about the same. Apart from that, he advised others to observe the law of Moses and offer sacrifices. Okay? He told them, observe the law of Moses and keep the sacrifices. So he did not despise anything. Okay? This is according to Mark 1, 44. Mark 1, 44. See? And saith unto him, See thou say nothing to any man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest, and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for testimony unto them. So he's telling people to keep the law of Moses. So Jesus also promoted and respected, okay? Jesus also promoted the respect for the law as it was being taught by the scribes and the Pharisees in his day, okay? So, most often he quoted the Tanakh. The Tanakh is also called the Torah. He quoted from there most of the time, Mark 12, 28, see? Uh, Mark 12, 28. I just show you but a few verses so that you can understand. And one of the scribes came and having heard uh, them reasoning together and persevering he uh, perceiving that he had answered them well asked him which of the first commandment of all you see is talking about uh, the commandments the torah and jesus answered him the first of all the commandments is hear O israel the lord our god is one lord so you see he's quoting he's quoting okay he's quoting the torah so meaning he he, he, he he definitely had respect for the Torah. Now, and of course you can go and check um, uh, Luke 4.4. 4. You can go and check uh, Luke uh, 4 verses 8, uh, verses 12 also of Luke. There's so many places showing Jesus quoting the Torah. In all of this, Jesus showed that his religion was Judaism. Okay, so Jesus was a... Uh, of the Judaism religion that is a 
portrayed in all these instances explaining about uh, how he used to go to the synagogues and do this and this. So he followed the Judaism religion. Now, as Jesus spoke to a group of Jews, he issued a bold challenge to them. And he asked them, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? Remember this? In the book of John 8, uh, 46. Remember what he told them? Which of you convinces me of sin? And if any say the truth, why do you not believe me? Now, Jesus is telling them, can you, can you condemn me? Can you prove me of guilty of any sin? Because I've fulfilled everything that Judaism religion requires someone to fulfill. So, he, was, uh, he did all the religious things. And there's something that I want you to see concerning this. Now, if Jesus had in any way could have departed from religious observances of Judaism, his enemies would have immediately seized this as an opportunity to condemn him. As it was, Jesus has a, had a very good knack for silencing his critics. Remember in Matthew, Jesus knew how to silence his critics, Matthew 22, verses 46. See what Jesus did here. And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither dust any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. So Jesus was uh, really sharp in knowing how to silence these uh, uh, critics. Now Jesus had many harsh words for the leaders. You remember the Pharisees? He had many harsh words for the leaders within his own religion. It is important to remember that Jesus, Jesus' condemnation of the Pharisees, scribes and Sadducees, as written in Matthew 24, was not a condemnation of the law, no, of the Judaism of the day. Jesus' denunciations of the hypocrites, corrupt officials, and the self-righteous were in a sharp contrast to his condemnation of those who were devout before God and lived out their faith honestly. You see, let me show you what the Bible says in, in Luke, in Luke 21 from verse 1. Okay, Luke 21 verse 1, it says, And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And uh, he saw also a certain poor widow casting in tither to mites. He said, Of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. For all these have their abundance cast in to the offerings of God, but she of a penalty hath cast in all the living that she had. You see, Jesus spoke out against Satan religious leaders because they teach man-made ideas. They teach man-made ideas, the doctrines of man. Okay? They teach man-made ideas as instead of teaching the commands of God. And this is very, very, very well explained why Jesus used to uh, uh, be angry at those leaders most of the time. You may, you may ask yourself, why, why was Jesus always angry with these Pharisees and Sadducees? Did he hate the Judaism religion? Did he hate religion? Did he hate all that? What was wrong? See, and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers. And the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Is this happening today? Instead of people teaching the true word of God, they have made it a den of thieves. It's happening right now. People are selling, they are selling blessings. People are selling miracles. People are selling these. Pay me so that I can prophesy to you. It's, it's just the same way why Jesus was angry about these people. The Pharisees, fake Pharisees, today's modern day Pharisees, are just the same way. They dress so well, you will think, uh, you know, they are so good and everything, but they're just some modern day Pharisees, nothing else. Because if you don't follow the word of God, then you're just fake. 
And those are the people why uh, who are being condemned by Jesus. It's not the religion. Now, these actions were not destined, designed to destroy Judaism or to, pu uh, uh, or to uh, uh, paint it badly. Jesus was an observant Jew who perfectly followed the law. Okay? Jesus followed 100% the law. And uh, he was not just, uh, you know, playing around. But now, the death of Christ brought an end to the old covenant of God that he had marked with Israel. This is shown in tearing of the temple veil. You remember when the temple, the veil of the temple was torn? In the book of Mark, uh, let me show you, in the book of Mark 15, 38. Mark 15, 38. You remember the temple was, the veil was torn? And the veil of the temple was rent in twine from the top to the bottom. Do you remember that? And uh, this one established the new co covenant. Okay? So this, the, the veil established a new covenant. And I want to show you that Luke, Luke 22, uh, verses 20. Okay? This is why we hear Christ is the end of the law, the law of Moses. Now we have the law of Christ. Look here. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this, likewise also the cup after supper, this is uh, during the last supper, Jesus said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. You see, Jesus ended the law. He's the end of the law. He ended the law. The law of Moses was done. After he died, that was the end of the law. Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that uh, a, a test, a, the, a test uh, uh, um, what is it called? Uh, a testament is all, always uh, purified when there is a shedding of blood. I don't know. I don't know if I'm quoting the, 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 the verse very well. But uh, there has to be blood to effect a new testament. So that, that's what I'm paraphrasing. So Christ is the end of the law. And the early church was rooted in Judaism and Jewish messianism. And the early believers in Christ were mostly Jews. But as the believers proclaimed, uh, you know, the Jesus, uh, risen Jesus, as the believers started proclaiming the risen Jesus, uh, the Messiah, the unbelieving Jews rejected them, and they were forced to make a clean break from Judaism. Okay? Remember, remember, the Christians were first called Christians, disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. That is uh, Acts 11, verse 26. Go and read there. Now, if Christians now broke out from Judaism, okay, they broke out from Judaism and they became Christians, then it meant there was another law which was introduced because you have to have a law to, you know, to guide your principles. Are you getting the point? So the Jews, the unbelieving Jews, those, those who remained in Judaism, the unbelieving Jews rejected Jesus and rejected his sacrifice and his new covenant and they were forced to make a clean break from you know uh, a, uh, 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 this jesus whole thing and they said okay we will remain judaist and uh, these other people they will go on with uh, you know christianity and that's why you see there's a lot of controversy between christians and judaism because uh, they want to keep this judaism judaism but uh, Christians have already broken from that law. This is the law of Moses, and this is the law of Christ. Are you, are you seeing the difference? This is the law of Christ. Christ has already changed everything through his cross. At the cross, everything was changed. Let me show you in the, in the book of Acts 13.45. It talks about that. Acts um, 13.45. Uh, and you can read to 47. It talks about these people and what exactly happened. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. They don't want the new covenant of Jesus. They are, they are, they are arguing. They are telling Paul, no, 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 no. As we believe in Judaism, the, our religion, Judaism, and, and all that, they don't want to listen. 
Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should have first been spoken to you. But seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves worthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. For so has the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light for the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. You see, you have to break from any other corner of religion and follow Christ. And uh, you see, Christianity is not, is, not, um, is not like the other religions. Christianity is a religion of following by faith. Every other religion tells you you have to do something. You see, the law of Moses was all about you have to keep the law, you have to do not kill, do not do this, do not do that. The same with all other religions. When you look at uh, Islam, you have to make sure you do this and this and this and this. When you look at um, uh, 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 Mormonism, you, when it's, you have to do some things. When you look at, uh, uh, um, what is it called, the, the seventh day, you have to do this and this and this. Uh, when you look at, uh, basically all the other religions, they, they something that you needed to do. But Christianity is the only religion whereby it's all faith. It's all faith, not of works. Not of works, Ephesians. 2, 8 to 9. See what the Bible is all about. Christianity is a very different kind of religion. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works. So there is nothing that you need to do in Christianity, lest any man should boast. So Christianity is the only religion whereby it's all about faith in Jesus. So when you decide to follow whichever, yes, Jesus was a... He, was ju 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 uh, he followed Judaism since when he was uh, uh, from birth. And that was true because uh, the Bible says uh, true religion is helping the poor, helping the needy, doing good and all that. That's what religion is all about. If you really want to follow religion, do good. But religions that, uh, religion does not save. Like for those people in Catholics, they say, oh, the Catholic Church says, the religion does not save, my friends. What saves is believing in Jesus. And Jesus fulfilled all these religion protocols and everything so that he can show you religion still cannot save you. You will be there, you will do everything, you will uh, run up and down, you will fulfill every law written. But then the only salvation has to come from Jesus Christ. Are you understanding the point? So Jesus was the Messiah that the Jews has, had been anticipating. Remember that? They had been anticipating the Jew, uh, the, these Jews. And uh, he was born into the religion of Judaism. He fulfilled the Jewish religion and everything. And when he's, and, uh, when he's on, these people of, of him, the Jew, Judah, you know, the people of Judah, the Israeli, they rejected him. He gave up his life as a sacrifice for sins for the world. Jesus sacrificed himself for the world. His blood, his blood ratified the new covenant and soon, soon, after his death, Judaism lost his temple, his priesthood, and his sacrifices. Everything got lost. Meaning, signifying that now Christianity is a true, true religion. And it's not just about religion, it's about the faith in Jesus Christ. And that's why people really in Christian, uh, in the Christian religion, they don't really talk about the religion much, as much as it is about believing in Jesus. Now, it's all about uh, this man. It's not about some deeds. You see, with other religion, it's all about what the religion requires. Do this, our religion, once you do this, our religion. But with Christianity, it's all about the man, the man, Jesus. What he did for us at the cross. He died for us at the cross, he was buried and rose again. And once you understand that, then what? that is what salvation is all about. That's exactly what salvation is all about. So once you believe that and you understand it and you confess it to Christ, you tell him, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins, you were buried and rose again, as the scriptures say then my friend, you're saved. That's all about Christianity. Now, that's exactly what was the religion of Jesus. I hope you've been able to understand. 
what he did from his days and uh, how he followed the law of Moses and kept all the feasts and did everything. He went to the synagogues, you know, he followed the, the, the Torah. And, uh, you know, he was just like any other, uh, you know, a uh, uh, religion guy out there. He fulfilled everything. So religion is not bad, but people have made it a den of thieves and things like that. But remember, religion does, does not save. That you have to choose. Am I going to keep the traditions of men or am I going to follow the law of God? That's why Jesus himself, he was the end of that law and the end of all those religions. And he said, now, there's only one thing. You have to become a Christian. By doing what? Believing in me, what I did for you at the cross. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've been able to understand. And uh, please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And also you can share the video and subscribe so that you can always watch more and more and more whenever we post. God bless you and have a blessed time.